His first day in the building, we get to introduce you to new Colts defensive coordinator Gus Bradley. Coach, welcome to Indianapolis. As you entered this offseason, what was most exciting about the opportunity to join the Indianapolis Colts, in particular leading this defense? Well, I mean, very exciting. First of all, just the culture. You know, I think uh, multiple people called me and talked about the culture and what they've created here in the locker room and the coaching staff. And then the vision Coach Wright and Chris Ballard have together to lead this organization to where it wants to go and uh, you know it's been a, a really an awesome week of, of gathering information just understanding what's uh, you know the Colts are all about and I know they might not there might not be players of course in the building hey quite a few of them were just in the Pro Bowl so that's right they're not here right. how many of the guys have you been able to touch base with what has been really the message you've been able to connect well with them I so think far? you know they, they just finished up and now they're in the Pro Bowl so you get a chance to reach out to them and have some conversations and and uh, guys in the offseason uh, you know are, are, are different areas of the United States right now training but you, they touched base they called back and you can really see it sense the genuine excitement that they have and uh, their spirited group uh, had a chance to see a couple guys you know just walking around the building that were here for you know taking care of their injuries so uh, I, I think that's really the the, the the whole thing is that, boy, you got some good players here. The coaching staff, the defensive staff, Matt Eberflus and the staff did a great job with this group and the foundation that they set. And now it's our job and the player's job to take this to another level. Not a bad start when you get to see Darius Leonard get a pick six there in the Pro Bowl to get things rolling right. for you, right? Yeah, he's been a ball hawk. I know he's, you know, you see him make plays throughout the season and it travels, right? He goes to Vegas and gets another one. So, yeah, it was great to see. You do have so many veterans within this defense. Guys like Kenny Moore II, Darius Leonard, DeForest Buckner. I mean, so many guys who we could name. How do you describe, one, the foundation that is already here, the principles that have been established, but then the potential that you bring in and how you anticipate growing and building this defense. Well, first of all, uh, you know, it's great to have that caliber type player, a Pro Bowl player at each position group, a D-line, you know, someone in the linebacker and someone in the secondary because it's so important, the leadership of each group, and then it'll permeate towards leadership within the whole defense unit and the team. So that's, that's a great part of the foundation there, knowing what's going to be said in the locker room. And then their work ethic. Uh, you know, we're going to be an effort-based defense, but they pride. Coach Wright, that's where I think we connected. He talked about an effort-based team, you know, where that's where it starts. And to see those fundamental principles when you turn on the tape and you say, all right, and we can add to it because, you know, you, you just got to improve every year. Uh, there's a final goal, right, that we're all after. And there's a process that takes where we harden the group and get them prepared to where they face the rigors of the season. And so excited to be with this group. I know they're excited and, you know, and here it is. Has been what a couple weeks out to, you know into the off season, and when you talk to them on the phone, it's like they're ready to go for the the next opportunity. A lot of people familiar certainly with your path, with your journey, the success that you've had in multiple stops, notably you know the Legion of Boom in Seattle, and then the success you've had therefore since going you know to things to places like the Chargers, of course last season with the Raiders, Jacksonville along the way. What are the different characteristics or the ways that you've evolved your different your defense? from what we saw kind of going through starting with Seattle up to sure. now what you bring into Well, I think, you know, that's what a lot of people say, oh, it's cover three. But, you know, in the Legion of Boom, those years, you know, back in the early, two, you know, 2012, 2013. But, you know, you have to stay a year ahead and, you know, or two years ahead of the offenses. So it really has evolved to where it's not just three. There's, there's a lot of three, but all of a sudden it turns into more of a match principle based on formations. And, and you're looking for aggressive coverage in the back end. That, that's, you know, first and foremost. So the ability to do that to tie the rush and the cover together, creative ways to do that. It's all evolved since those days. But I think, you know, when you have good players, you take a look at their skill set and how can you incorporate it. You know, we've got some really good blitzers on this team, some guys that make a lot of plays. So it's important to watch the tape, see what they do well, and then capitalize on that with the scheme going forward. One of the things that we have seen on display this postseason is the emerging young talent in the AFC at the quarterback position. Joe Burrow, of course, Patrick Mahomes been on the scene for a long time. What you saw Josh Allen do over the course of the playoffs. How do you build a defense? How do you have to continuously adapt a defense and evolve to keep pace with these dynamic offenses that you're going to face within the AFC? Well, it's so true. It comes down to affecting the quarterback. And, you know, you can do it in many ways. It's not just sacks. It's, you know, making a quarterback hitch, creating indecision, getting him off the spot 
spot, you know, force him to, to get off, you know, where he maybe wants to be, where he can step in the pocket, make him get outside the pocket. So there's many variables that are, you know, going to affect and affecting the quarterback. But you have to do it. You have to find ways. And you try to do it with a four-man rush, but you got to incorporate different styles of zone pressures and blitzes to somehow affect him. And um, the rush on, on the front and the coverage in the back end have to be tied together. And that's going to be the challenge for us, you know, starting in OTAs is getting a group that where they really mesh together and there's trust built from the front end to the back end. And we had a conversation on the Colts official podcast. JJ Stankovic joins us on that. And you talked about a story in which you first met Frank Reich. You guys have, you know, similar paths in that you both made stops with with the Chargers, weren't there at the same time, but where was it that you finally met right. Coach Wright? I mean, how ironic, right? The combine. <laughs> you know, uh, well, I, Philip Rivers, you know, we were together at the Chargers, and you hear so many cool stories about Coach Wright and his influence that he had with the Chargers. And so you hear about him. Nick Sirianni, you know, they were together. And, uh, and uh, so I think, you know, Frank knew of me and I knew of Frank, and then we're at the combine and we happen to walk out of the building. He probably doesn't remember it, but I remember, you know, just saying, Coach Wright and, you know, Gus Bradley, and we shook each other's hand. We talked for five, ten seconds, and we went our separate ways. But that was really the first time I had a chance to meet him face-to-face. But uh, it, it's been a great week or, two, you know, two weeks of our conversations, whatever it's been. But uh, just to learn more about him and the impact he's had in this locker room, along with Chris Ballard, has been something to see, and it's really the beginning stages for me. It all comes full circle, right back to Indianapolis. Your greeting there, your introduction to the Combine, right now working together. Give people just a bit of perspective now, the next steps that you take in sure. building a defensive well, staff. Well, we got to put together our staff. You know, we got to uh, hire a linebacker coach, D-line coach, and bring it in. And then the next step after that, we'll give a chance to really just evaluate the, the players. And each position group, including myself, will evaluate the tape. And it's really to take a look at the skill set. And how does it fit in the scheme and how can we utilize their skill set? So that takes some time and then we'll come together and, and make some adjustments based on what we've done in the past and what we need to incorporate and you know, get that all done and, and then go to the combine. And, uh, you know, so there's a lot that needs to be done, but excited to, you know, first and foremost put together a staff that I think the players and really represents this organization. Coach, so excited to get to work with you. Welcome to Indianapolis. Great to have you as part of the Colts organization. Thank you. Appreciate it.